The respiratory system serves to bring oxygen into our body and remove carbon dioxide from our body. Our respiratory system has a large surface area inside the lungs where the gas exchange can take place between the blood and the air. Incoming and outgoing air goes through a series of tubes that provide a pathway for the air to go from our mouth to the lungs or lungs to the mouth. Inspiration begins with air coming into the nose or taking the shortcut through the mouth. During the process of inspiration, the incoming air must be altered to minimize any damage to the lungs. Inside the nasal cavity, incoming air is brought to the body temperature, which is relevant if you're breathing in cold air. The air is also humidified to minimize any drying effect on the delicate lungs, as well as any airborne particles being trapped by the mucus and mucus-laden hairs and cilia along the air pathway. The sounds we make, or our voice for talking, comes from the larynx, where expiring air travels through the vocal cords. The nasal cavity is also the location for many olfactory or smell nerve endings. The pathway that air travels is called the conducting portion of the respiratory system. At the back of the nose and mouth, air enters the pharynx. The trachea brings air down to the thoracic cavity where the branches to the right and left primary bronchi. The branching occurs exponentially into smaller and smaller bronchioles ending at terminal bronchioles that feed into the alveoli. These terminal bronchioles may also be called respiratory bronchioles because they have some alveoli off of them directly. Lining the respiratory tract is respiratory mucosa. The mucosa is made of pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelial tissue containing goblet cells to produce mucus. The cilia work together in a rhythmic, wave-like manner, much like seaweed would look underwater moving with the current. When mucus sits on top of the cilia, it is exposed to the incoming particle-filled air. The airborne particles stick to the mucus, and the moving cilia moves the particle-stuck mucus up and out of the respiratory tract. Smoking paralyzes the cilia, allowing the trapped debris in the smoke to remain on the mucus and migrate into the epithelial cells, including any carcinogenic material. When the smoke is worn off, the cilia move the buildup of debris, causing a lot of expectorant. The nose begins with the external nares leading to the nasal cavity. The purpose of the nasal cavity is to warm, humidify, and filter incoming air. It does this by the turbulence created by the shelf-like concha that stick out from the lateral sides of the nasal wall into the nasal cavity and curl downward. The turbulent air lingers in the nasal cavity long enough for the temperature to equilibrate, the air to humidify, and some of the airborne debris can stick to the mucus on the many hairs found in there. There is a wall dividing the right nasal cavity from the left nasal cavity called the nasal septum. The floor of the nasal cavity, as well as the roof of the mouth, is called the palate. It has a bony part called the hard palate and a softer, more flexible part called the soft palate. During swallowing, the soft palate, along with the uvula hanging down from it, move to touch the back of the mouth to prevent food from moving up and into the nasal cavity. When viewing a cadaver, we see the three nasal concha, superior, middle, and inferior. The palate is made of two parts, the soft palate and the hard palate. We can also see the uvula or the punching bag that hangs at the back of your throat. The eustachian tube opening is in the nasopharynx. This leads to the inside of the middle ear just behind the eardrum. We can even see bunches of olfactory nerve endings used for smell. The pharynx has three sections. The nasopharynx is the back of the nasal cavity where you can find the eustachian tubes leading to the middle ear or the back side of the tympanic membrane, otherwise known as the eardrum. The pharyngeal tonsils are also located here. The oropharynx is the back of the mouth where we can find both the palatine and lingual tonsils. The laryngopharynx is the top part of the neck. This is the last section where both food and air can travel. The epiglottis is part of the larynx, but when we're breathing, it sticks up into the pharynx, like the top of a garbage can lid when it's open. The hyoid bone is embedded in tissue and muscle under the tongue. It is the only free-floating bone in the body. We can see the regions of the pharynx again in this cadaver view. The nasopharynx at the back of the nasal cavity, the oropharynx at the back of the oral cavity, and the laryngopharynx at the entrance to the throat in the neck.